Hello everyone, I am uh, Amit Maru and uh, today in this video we are going to discuss about uh, divide and conquer strategy. In this video we will uh, discuss first what is the divide and conquer algorithm is and then we will discuss uh, one algorithm that is binary search which is the concept of divide and conquer algorithm. So let us start our today's video on divide and conquer strategy. First of all try to understand what is divide and conquer uh, strategy is. Divide and conquer algorithm basically use when the size of the instance is very large. Suppose we have one problem and the problem name is suppose p. Now the problem itself has a for example very large size of the instance. So now our ad hoc algorithm cannot be directly applied because the size of the instance is very large. So whenever the size of the instance is very large when we apply our ad hoc algorithm at that time your ad hoc algorithm cannot efficiently give the solution of the problem. So the first step is we have to divide into different different parts. It means that whenever the instance is very large we have to make it smaller first. Right? So for example P is the problem which has a large instance then we have to divide our P into different different parts. For example P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. These all are the different parts of our P problem. Right? So we have divided into different different parts. Now these all the parts are smaller so that we can directly apply our ad hoc algorithm for every part. So apply ad hoc algorithm for the P1, P2 and P3 part so that we can get solution of every part. Like uh, we have apply our ad hoc algorithm and uh, for example we are getting solution that is our S1. This S1 is a solution of P1 only. Then apply ad hoc algorithm for the second part that is P2 then we can get solution that is S2. Likewise P3 has a solution S3, P4 has a solution S4 and P5 has solution S5. So now we have a solution of each and every parts. Now the last step is we have to merge the solution of every part like S1 to S5. So merge the solution and this solution is for example capital S. So this capital S is the solution of our main problem that is capital P. This concept is known as divide and conquer strategy. If we write uh, algorithm based on this concept then we can say that we have to call one function that is divide and conquer and pass capital P that is our main problem as an argument. So first we need to check whether P is a too small or not. If it is too small then we can directly apply our ad hoc algorithm and we can find the solution. But if it is not uh, small then we have to divide into different different parts. So if p is uh, too small then we can directly apply our ad hoc algorithm and we can return solution of p. But whenever it is not uh, smaller or we can say it is a very large at that time we have to divide into different different parts. So divide p and obtain p1, p2, p3, p and different parts of the problem. So now we have a different parts like a p1 to p and and we have to find the solution by using uh, ad hoc algorithm. So now when we have to check whether the value of n is greater than or is equal to 1 or not and then apply divide and conquer to each and every sub, uh, sub problem. So apply divide and conquer or we can say it is a recursion uh, or recursive call that is we are calling same function divide and conquer and we are passing p1 as argument then after p2 as argument then after pn as a argument. So when we pass p1 as argument at that time d uh, p1 uh, will be checked whether it is a too small or not. Now we have divided into different parts so p1 is a smaller so that will give the solution of p1 and this is our s1. Likewise for uh, p2 we can get solution s2. Likewise for pn we can get solution for example sn. And at the end, we have to combine each and every solution. This concept is simply known as divide and conquer strategy. Based on this uh, recursion function or based on this algorithm, we can write one recurrence equation like if the value of n is uh, too small, at that time we can directly uh, find the solution of p that is t of n is equal to f of n. So required time is suppose f of n. If n is not large and then we have to divide into different parts so every part required uh, some time to find the solution and it is the t of n1 plus t of n2 plus t of nr. 
now once we get solution of every part then we have to combine uh, solution of every part it also required some time and this time is known as for example g of n so plus g of n when the value of n is sufficiently large right for the uh, total time we can say in our uh, divide and conquer total time t of n taken by the divide and conquer algorithm is something like uh, t of n is equal to a into t of n by b plus g of n and here b is nothing but uh, uh, the number uh, which basically used to divide our instance into different different parts for example our pre problem we are dividing by 5 for example dividing by 5 then b is equal to 5 so whole instance and divide by 5 and we are getting for example different different five parts so a is nothing but 5 right so one sub problem for example s1 required for example one second then how many parts are there five parts so five multiply by one second is equal to five second plus g of n is now once we get solution of every part we have to merge also so at the end we have to merge the solution of every part it requires some time and this part this time is known as g of n so the total time uh, taken by the divide and conquer algorithm is t of n is equal to a into t of n divided by b plus g of n once we compare this equation uh, with our recurrence equation which we have seen uh, in our uh, master method then this kind of equation we can easily solve by using master method we can identify the value of a b and based on the g of n we can get the value of p and k then we can get uh, uh, theta uh, for any for any divide and conquer algorithm that we have already discussed in our uh, previous video right so this is simple again one example suppose uh, we have a problem of size n then we suppose dividing into two parts then n divided by uh, 2 uh, then sub problem 2 is again n divided by 2 so we have a two sub problem uh, which has a size n by 2 and then find out the solution of first sub problem uh, then solution of second sub problem and then merge both the solution and we can get a solution to original problem and this is the simple divide and conquer technique by using this strategy we can solve uh, various uh, algorithm like uh, binary search uh, uh, quick sort merge sort matrix multiplication exponential these all are the various algorithm we will discuss uh, uh, in this chapter that is divide and conquer so let us start our first uh, uh, algorithm that is binary search and try to understand the concept of divide and conquer by using binary search so let us start what is binary search is binary search is uh, the algorithm uh, that basically used to search uh, any number from large list of elements suppose we have a n number of elements and if you want to search any element from the list whether this number is available or not if it is available then we'll uh, return position or we can set the index of the array uh, to the user so that we can identify whether a number is available if it is available then and in which position it is available this concept is known as searching algorithm so binary search uh, algorithm is basically used to search any number uh, from the large uh, list of number so uh, the basically uh, the problem here that you need to understand the problem here is uh, when we search any uh, number from the large list of number at that time the problem consists of finding x in the array t t is our list of element uh, and our x is a searching element that we are going to search from the capital t array if indeed it is there if x is not available in the uh, array then it will return position where it might be inserted it says that if a number is available in the list then we'll give uh, directly the position where our number is avail available if it is not available at that time we'll return position where it might be inserted right and to solve this problem uh, we can use a sequential search algorithm or a divide and conquer that is our binary search algorithm
Suppose we use a sequential search algorithm, then the basic concept of sequential search algorithm is we need to search uh, from the first list to the uh, first element to the last element of the array. So your uh, loop will be started from uh, i is equal to 1 to n. Every time we need to check our x is less than or equal or we can say that your uh, list of element or uh, element of the array is larger or greater than or is equal to x or not. If it is so, then we'll return i. Either it is equal to x or it is greater than uh, x, then we'll return i. Otherwise, we'll return n plus 1. Right? So either element is available. If n element is not available, then we'll return n plus 1. Otherwise, we'll return uh, exact position or uh, the position where uh, it might be inserted. This concept is known as sequential search algorithm. Now, when we think about the time complexity of the sequential search algorithm, then the time complexity for this particular algorithm is order of uh, r or theta of r. This r is nothing but uh, r is the index written. For example, your algorithm has written, for example, 5. It means that our number is available on position number 5. Or in worst case, we can say your number is available at the end of the list or your number is not available or at that time your uh, algorithm required order of n. In worst case, your sequential search algorithm required order of n time. Right? So now uh, let us discuss how we can apply a divide and conquer concept to find the uh, solution of this problem. Uh, and this uh, solution or we can say the algorithm is known as binary search. Just take one example of uh, what is binary search and how we can reduce time complexity. In sequential search it required order of uh, R or in worst case it required order of N. In binary search it required less than the order of N. How it is possible let us understand with one example. Suppose we have a list of the number and we want to search one element that is X. One thing you need to return here is uh, in a binary search algorithm your input must be in ascending order. If your list of number is not in ascending order then we cannot apply our binary search algorithm. So it is mandatory that your number must be uh, in ascending order then and then we can apply our binary search otherwise not. Suppose we have a list of number like minus 1, minus 2, 0, 3, 8, 8, 9, 12, 12. 26 and 31 total we have uh, 11 numbers in our array and we want to search whether 12 is available in the list or not if it is available then we'll return first instance of 12 right so for example 12 is available on uh, index number uh, 8 so we'll return 8 not 9 because the same 12 is also available on 9 but as per the rule uh, your algorithm first return 12 which is available on the index number 8 Right? So let us uh, understand what is binary search algorithm and how we can uh, uh, find this uh, solution by using divide and conquer. So as per the binary search algorithm, we have to consider our first index as a i and the last index as a for example j. Our first index is known as i, last index 11 is known as suppose j. Now find out middle index, how we can find middle index i plus j divided by 2. So i is equal to 1, j is equal to 11, so 1 plus 11 divided by 2, that is 12 divided by 2, 6. Then we can get middle index. So 6 is a middle index. See, i is the index value that is 1, j is the index value that is 11, and we are finding middle one by using i plus j divided by 2, uh, uh, 2 so that we can get k is equal to 6. On that particular index has some value like uh, on ith position minus 5 is available, on kth position 8, 8 is available, in jth position uh, uh, 31 is available. Right? So this i, k and j indicates index number but the value is different. Now uh, next step is we have to uh, compare our searching element with the middle element. So the middle index is 6 but the value is 8. So we have to compare with 8 uh, our searching element with 8. If your searching element 12 
is larger than the 8 or we can say the middle element it means that our element searching element is available in right part not in left part if your element or we can say the searching element is less than or is equal to 8 then it must be in left part again i'm repeating if the searching element is larger than the middle element then we have to search in a right part if it is less than or is equal to uh, the middle element then we have to search in a left part right so on very first uh, uh, step we can reduce uh, half of the time either we have to search our element in left part or right part this is the benefit of binary search algorithm so uh, let us compare 12 is larger than the 8 so it will be definitely available in right part so whenever your element is right part then we have to search in this portion only so we have to identify next i and j our next i is i is equal to k plus 1 and j as it is right so i will be the k plus 1 this is the i and our j as it is because we are searching element in right part now this thing you need to return here is whenever it is in uh, uh, right part at that time the value of k will be uh, will be a change and it will be i is equal to k plus 1 and j as it is whenever it is in left part at that time the value of i will be as it is and the value of j will be k so j is equal to k but here it is in right part so the value of i will be changed and this i is nothing but i is equal to k plus 1 so k plus 1 means what 6 plus 1 7 so i is equal to 7 and j as it is that is 11 now again we have to uh, follow same step we have to identify the middle element that is k i plus j divided by 2 that is 7 plus 11 divided by 2 so 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9 so middle element will be on ninth position so k is equal to 9 now again we have to compare uh, our middle element with our searching element so as we discussed if the searching element is larger uh, than the middle element then we have to search in right part if it is less than or equal then we have to search in left part here our searching element is 12 and our middle element is also 12 so it is less than or equal it means that our element is available in our left part right so uh, let us compare uh, let us uh, search our element in left part so as we discuss whenever it is in left part then your uh, uh, value of j will be uh, changed and i will be as it is so i will be as it is and the value of j becomes k so j is equal to k because it is in left part right so again uh, we have to uh, uh, follow same step we have to identify middle element so i is equal to 7 j is equal to 9 so 9 plus 7 is equal to 16 16 divided by 2 that is 8 so we can get middle element that is on 8 so 8 is our middle index and the value is 12 so again we have to follow same step like we have to compare our searching element with the middle one so again it is equal so whenever it is less than or equal then we have to search in left part so when we search in the left part at that time the value of i will be as it is and the value of j will be changed and this is j is equal to k so i as it is and j will be k it means that 8 so we can say that i as it is and j will be k now again uh, find out the middle element that is i plus j that is 7 plus 8 so uh, total 15 so 15 divided by 2 uh, then we can get uh, 7 7.5 but uh, we are using here integer value so 7 only so the middle element k will be 7 right so here i and k both are equal in this case now compare again the middle element that is middle element is 9 we have to compare with our searching element that is 12 so 12 is larger than the middle element 9 so it means that it is available in right part so we have to search in right part and whenever it is in right part then we have to change the value of i and j as it is and the value of i will be k plus 1 
So the value of i will be k plus 1, the value of k is 7, so 7 plus 1, 8. So i will be 8 and j as it is. So i and j both are equal in this case. So whenever the value of i and j both are equal, then we have to stop there and we have to return the value of i which is our searching element. So in this case, we will return i and i is nothing but 8. It indicates that your element 12 is available on position number 8. This is all about binary search algorithm. Now let us discuss a binary search algorithm. Suppose we have one function, binary search function, and we are passing array t of 1 to n and searching element x as an argument. Here the size of the t array is 1 to n, it means that total number of elements are n. First we need to check n is equal to 0 or not. If the value of n is equal to 0, it means that there is no element in the list. So when we search the element, there is no element in the list, then we'll uh, return the position where we can insert our element. So we'll return n plus 1, that is 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. So whenever there is no any element in the list, at that time your algorithm will return 1. Another condition is, if searching element is larger than the t of n, in this case also will return value n plus 1. Otherwise, we'll call another function that is binary recursion and we'll pass t of 1 to n means array and searching element x as a argument. In this binary recursion function, uh, here the 1 will be stored in our i and n will be stored inside the j. So the value of i is nothing but uh, the first index and j is uh, the last index. So i indicates a first element, i point a first element and j point a last element. Now first we need to check value of i and j. If both are equal then return value i. Otherwise find out the middle element i plus j divided by 2 and we can get k that is a index of middle element. Now we need to check if the value of middle element is greater than or is equal to x or we can say our searching element is less than or is equal to middle element it means that our element is available in the left part whenever the element is available in the left part then the value of i as it is and the value of j will be changed and j is equal to k so i as it is and j becomes k so j is equal to k otherwise your element is available in right part so whenever our element is in right part, at that time the value of j as it is and the value of i will be k plus 1. So here the value of i is equal to k plus 1 and j as it is. In this way this function will call itself continuously until the value of i and j both are equal. When the value of i and j both are equal then we will return i as we discussed in our algorithm. Right? So this is a, a binary search algorithm. Let us discuss a time complexity of binary search. So as we discuss a divide and conquer algorithm, uh, can, uh, the time complexity of divide and conquer algorithm can be solved by using a master method. So uh, let us uh, have one equation that is a master method equation. In this equation, uh, t of n is equal to t of n by 2 plus g of n. This is general format of master theorem. In this case uh, here uh, uh, every time we are dividing our element into different two parts so the value of b is equal to 2 and every time we are getting uh, two different parts but we are not using both the part we are using only first part. It means that if the element is available uh, in the right part then we are ignoring our uh, left part. If element is available in a left part then we are ignoring our right part. So every time we are using either a first part or second part. So every time we are getting only one part. So a is equal to 1. So our equation will be t of n is equal to uh, 1 into t of n by b that is b is equal to 2 and g of n where g of n belongs to theta of 1. It is a constant time. So g of n belongs to theta of n. It means that theta of m rest to 0. So now let us put the value of uh, a, b, k and p in this case. So that we can uh, find time complexity by using master method. So here the value of a is equal to 1. b is equal to 2. 
if we if we put the value of k is equal to 0 and p is equal to 0 at that time we can get value 1 that is constant now uh, put this all the value uh, check this all the value uh, three condition as we discussed in master method so second case 2a is true in our master method so the time complexity of t of n belongs to theta of log n see the time complexity of binary search is log n which is less than the n so your uh, binary search algorithm uh, binary search algorithm is better than the uh, sequential search algorithm the limitation of binary search algorithm as we discussed is uh, your input must be in ascending order then and then we can apply binary search algorithm otherwise not so finally the time complexity of binary search algorithm is t of n belongs to theta of log n thank you thank you very much